Okay, so let me get uh, let me get started today because it's eleven zero one, and I'm excited to to share with you today from Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So you know this book has been uh, a result of nearly thirty years of work by Napoleon Hill, where he was interviewing. Uh, the greatest minds of the 20th century, very, very successful people, and he's put together uh, what he's learned from, from them. And in particular, over the last three months, we've been playing Earl Nightingale's take on Think and Grow Rich, where he introduces this book by Napoleon Hill. And of course, I've added uh, comments from the book itself. Okay? So... I want to say a good morning to all of you. Just so Jeff, Wendy, Riswan, thank you for taking the time to, uh, to come in and listen to this. And for those of you on the replay. Okay. So, you know, Napoleon Hill wrote 13 Proven Steps to Riches, where riches are simply whatever you happen to want. Today, let us hear Earl Nightingale on the 12th principle on the brain. The twelfth principle, as outlined in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, has to do with the brain. If you had access to all the wealth in the world and took a penny, you would be doing exactly what you very probably have been doing in the use of your brain. Nothing in the world is more pitiful than the misunderstanding by the average person of the power of his brain and the minds to which it is connected, the conscious and the subconscious. You own in your brain the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force the world has ever known. Take, for example, the fact that the number of lines which connect the brain cells with one another equal the figure one followed by 15 million ciphers. It has been determined that there are from 10 to 14 billion cells in the average human cerebral cortex. It is inconceivable that such a network of intricate machinery should be in existence for the sole purpose of carrying on the physical functions incidental to growth and maintenance of the physical body. This is the mechanism that has given us the supersonic airplane, our deep rocket probes into outer space, the sciences, the arts, all that we know and use today and will use tomorrow have hatched from this small gray mass each of us carries around. Do you, can you doubt, even for a moment, that it can bring you and yours everything you want here on Earth? Of course it can. If you will recognize your power as an individual and stop acting like those who have never even thought about it, give it the job you've decided to accomplish and watch it handle it. Okay, so that was uh, uh, Earl Nightingale talking about the 12th principle, the brain. You know, when you ride a bicycle, you ride a motorbike, you do extreme sports, what do you wear to protect your brain? You wear a helmet, isn't it? We all know the brain is, is so important. Um, and you, you know the expression uh, or the question, which is more important, brain uh, versus brawn? Okay. Of course, uh, the main thing that women are impressed by our, uh, by our brawn, but actually uh, it's the brain that, uh, that works better, it gets you the leverage. It's the 1% from 100, 1% from 1,000, rather than this guy just full of muscle, uh, you know, hammering it out 100% of his, his own effort, which is a declining effort. The more effort you put in, of course, it will decline because you get, you get tired or you have to keep doing the same old thing that doesn't work. So, you know, the brain is very, very important, but we know the brain is very important, but as Napoleon Hill us uh, says we hardly use it. So let me share with you some highlights from uh, chapter 12 of Napoleon Hill's book. Um, he talks about intangible forces. Okay? The greatest forces are intangible. Okay? You need to you need to understand. And he explains, he says, through the ages which have passed, man has depended too much upon his physical senses and has limited his knowledge to physical things which he could see, touch, weigh, and measure. All of us are controlled by forces which are unseen and intangible. The whole of mankind 
has not the power to cope with or to control the intangible force wrapped up in the rolling waves of the oceans. Man has not the capacity to understand the intangible force of gravity, which keeps this little earth suspended in midair and keeps man from falling from it, much less the power to control that force. Man is entirely subservient to the intangible force which comes with a thunderstorm. And he's just as helpless in the presence of the intangible force of electricity. Nay, he does not even know what electricity is, where it comes from, or what is its purpose. He does not understand the intangible force and intelligence wrapped up in the soil of the earth, the force which provides him with every morsel of food he eats, every article of clothing he wears, every dollar he carries in his pockets. We use all that, but we don't understand it. And he continues to say, Napoleon Hill says, man with all of his boasted culture and education understands little or nothing of the intangible force, the greatest of all the intangibles, the intangible force of thought. He knows but little concerning the physical brain and its vast network of intricate machinery through which the power of thought is translated into its material equivalent. But he's now entering an age which shall yield entitlement no, enlightenment on the subject. Okay, so he wrote that 100 years ago. You know, today we have fMRI. The okay? MRI machines, this is the functional fMR, functional MRI machines that capture brain activity. Where, when you're taking a test or you're enjoying a cup of coffee, certain parts of, of the brain are extra busy. Okay, so the, this functional MRI can see, in fact, it can see your thoughts and feelings. And, and that's, uh, and that's, that's the research today, but Napoleon Hill uh, knew about that, talked about that years ago. So he, he talks about this broadcasting principle. Okay? He says, every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought. Through the medium of the ether, in a fashion similar to that employed by the radio broadcasting principle, Every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought which are being released by other brains. He says the creative imagination is the receiving set of the brain which receives thoughts released by the brains of others. It is the agency of communication between one's conscious or reasoning mind and the four sources from which one may receive thought stimuli. The subconscious mind is the sending station of the brain through which vibrations of thoughts are broadcast. Okay, so as in, I, I mentioned in my introduction is about the BBC, okay, where the, the, the broadcasting station. So the subconscious is the sending part, okay. The creative imagination is the receiving part where you receive thoughts are released by others. Now, so how can you increase the frequency? Step it up so that you, it's, it's, it's clearer, okay. So he says, he talks about this. Uh, he says, when stimulated or stepped up to a higher rate of vibration, the mind becomes more receptive to the vibration of thought, which reaches it through the ether from outside sources. This stepping up process takes place through the positive emotions or negative emotions. Through the emotions, the vibration of thought may be increased. Okay, so this is what he said earlier the importance of having uh, emotions when you when you have a compelling desire uh, uh, add an emotion in because the emotion is what steps up okay uh, the frequency of your broadcast thought which has been modified or stepped up by any of the major emotions vibrates at a much higher rate than ordinary thought he says and it is this type of thought which passes from one brain to another through the broadcasting machinery of the human brain. Then he elaborates a bit, he elaborates a bit on emotions by talking about feeling. He says, when the brain is vibrating at a rapid rate, it not only attracts thoughts and ideas released by other brains through the medium of the ether, but it gives to one's own thought that feeling which is essential before those thoughts will be picked up and act upon by one's subconscious mind. I mentioned earlier the fMRI machine. So, you know, it, it is able to pick up. So it, it's picking up because the brain is moving at a different frequency. And frequency, you know, 
who you know like um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a mechanical thing okay so people's frequencies energies are translated into you whether the positive or negative and he says the broadcasting principle is the factor through which you mix feeling or emotions with your thoughts and pass them to your subconscious mind okay. so the subconscious mind remember is the one that's giving us uh, it's a sending station so you want it to send strong messages uh, together with uh, and it becomes stronger when you've got feeling or emotion how does this work well you know when i don't feel like climbing stairs which is a, a lot of the times okay or when i'm i'm climbing and i'm you know and, and i'm having real difficulty i i don't feel like finishing all my sets because i'm in pain um you know what i do is i think of the pleasure of discussing the business with Chris on because when 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 we do the stairs um you know we have opportunity to talk a lot so uh, talking about the new skin business and, and i enjoy talking about that uh, with, with her. So I, I think about the pleasure of just talking about business with Fisuan when we climb. And then I also think about how I will feel after I accomplish the workout. You know, I feel a sense of victory. I know I will sense of sense of victory because I've, I've, I've conquered my mind. I also know that I'll actually be stronger for the next time and next time it was going to be easier, especially on the mountain. So I'm focusing on all these positive things and I'm focusing actually, tell you the truth, uh, enjoying the tose even better. You know, like I deserve the reward. And I remember when I was parachuting, you know, I'm standing at the door, I'm looking down at this thing and I'm thinking, oh, I feel really sick having to jump out that. And what what, what made me uh, do it was I keep thinking about the cigarette I was smoke when I land on the ground. Okay, so, you know, th these are positive feelings that help you go and do things. Okay. Now, he also talks about auto-suggestion. Okay. And he, this, is a, this was an entire chapter which we talked about before. Auto-suggestion is the keystone of this entire philosophy of think and grow rich. And he says, consider now the principle of auto-suggestion, which is the medium by which you may put into operation your broadcasting station. Okay, it's auto-suggestion. Operation of your mental broadcasting station is a comparatively simple procedure. You have but three principles to bear in mind and to apply when you wish to use your broadcasting station. The subconscious mind, that's the sending part. The creative imagination, that's the receiving station and auto-suggestion, which is the stimuli through which you put, you know, all these three principles into action. And he, he reminds us that the procedure begins with desire. So if you go back and look into desire, uh, you know, there are six definite practical steps to achieve desire. You need to go through every time you have a desire. Okay, so go back and 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 look through the, your notes. Finally, uh, he, he talks about this, he says, talks about this blessing in disguise. At that time, they, there was this depression, the Great Depression of 1929. And he says the depression was a blessing in disguise because it reduced the whole world to a new starting point that gives everyone a new opportunity. Now, I don't know what that has to do with broadcasting the brain, but basically, you know, uh, it, I think it's a good point because like the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, uh, it's a blessing in this guy. It, is, it has, it has brought everyone uh, to ground level again. And I believe the Empower Me opportunity is also uh, a blessing in this guy. We're all going to have a new starting point. Okay. Um, and we can broadcast a new message powerfully. So you, you really got to get excited about Empower Me. Okay, because as you get excited, you will attract people who are looking, you know, to, to take advantage of these five mega trends. You're attracting these people with, with that kind of message. Okay, so very important. Okay. Next week, uh, we're going to listen to the 13th principle, which is on the sixth sense. Okay, and uh, Tuesday tips tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. We haven't confirmed. We thought... We're going to get Oliver on. I'm not sure whether he's on or not. Uh, what this one will let us know. Okay. So uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, we all have a brain. Uh, and I think those of us uh, here in this meeting have got more than a brain. Okay. We've got guts as well. We, we've got courage. So we've got this fantastic combination, the gut and the brain combination working. Let's get the, the, let's get the brain to be more active. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.